another question for you. Um, a lot of what we were hearing this morning and seeing here is sort of based on Western tunings. Correct. Perfect chords and stuff like that. Correct. Um, have you experimented with other tunings and the sculptures that you produce, did they then become something that perhaps aesthetically we don't like, but people that are attuned to different tunings would find aesthetic? Of course, of course. That's a very good question as well. Um, that um, one of the sculptures that I had there with the modulation, that one is created with very microtonal um, tuning. So it's not very Western, and it actually I I have numbers that are point one two seven five blah 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 blah. Like, there's how I modulate those sculptures. It's actually for my eye. It's not even sometimes how it sounds because the sounds are not really pleasing and they don't have rhythm. So it's just a pure tone. But when I shape those sounds, I actually do microtonal changes to make those. So thank you. Thank you for that question. Hi. Um, I was curious of whether or not you've been approached by musicians or scientists uh, to work in collaboration with them, and if you could speak to some of those collaborations that you have. Well, um, I've I haven't had much of that yet. Uh, my dad is a scientist, as well as my mom, and I've worked in collaboration with um, the Louisville Orchestra and Teddy Abrams as the conductor. He he was amazing, but I I haven't had you know an opportunity where I I really work with somebody else uh, into that realm. Thank you. Yeah, so also thank you. Um, thank you. And on the science note, um, and where you're talking about harmonies and sort of what sounds good or feels good or looks good, that also has to do with our brains and how our brains perceive these experiences. Um, like it's somewhat subjective, but it's very common to how our brains are. Could you ever see yourself working with a neuroscientist? I, yes, I actually I want to to go to um, either the University of Chicago or I, I want to see how rhythm and how our clock works. Uh, I know the hypothalamus um, has the main sense of uh, balance and time in our brains, but I really want to explore more of why we have that rhythm and sense of, of time. So, and, and that obviously relates to, to music because music happens in time and sound. So, yeah, I'm very interested. So, thank you. Hey, Ricardo. Good to see you. Over here. Oh, hey, how are you? Oh. Oh, yeah. I just have a quick question. I know you work a lot with pure tones, microtones, and intervals, and all the way up to an octave. But have you ever experimented with snapshotting a song, like a moment in a song? And how, how is it more difficult for those complex harmonies of multiple instruments creating standing waves and different relationships? I'm just wondering if it's even possible to create snapshots of more complex music versus sine waves, or moving it from a simple wave to lots of waves working together. And how have you navigated that terrain yet? Just curious. Of course, no, 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 yeah. Um, I definitely have. They're just very convoluted, so they're hard for at least my eye to um, see clearly. The reason why this sculpture work is because there's space between them and there's not a lot of information. But transients, like you're talking about, they have a lot of information and sometimes visually it's, it's not that pleasing to my eye and it just looks like a bundle of just, you know, noise. So, you know, it, you could take it to the particle level as well to that and then you would see the, the probably the same thing and just, but I play with pure tones and to make the sculptures just look pleasing to my eye. So thank you. 
What's up, Ricardo? I think we have uh, two more questions. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, Brooks? How are you? What's up, man? So what is your dream project with this art form? Like, what do you see as, like, the penultimate of this type of art form and art energy that you're making? Um, thank you for your question. That's a very hard question. I, don't, I really don't know. I think it's, um, for, I don't have one, and it's my understanding of life. For me, this, this is how I understand life better and don't go more crazy than I am already. So um, it, this helps me navigate through life with an ohm and a flow. That, so that's, that would be my answer to that. Ricardo, um, I have the middle, right, Diane? Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, that guy, I don't know your name, sorry. Um, uh, so, all of us, well, a majority of us are hearing in this room, right? Um, I don't know if there's anyone who's deaf or hard of hearing in the room, but um, for someone who, have you um, thought of the inclusion of deaf people into this, and how has your experience working with that community been? Of course, I actually, um, I did an installation back in Mexico City where it was at a deaf theater and I played really low frequency oscillation and that was a tactile experience. So it was for deaf people and they were feeling sound and touching it. And I want to make this here in Chicago. So I'm trying to, if you guys you know, know anybody that can um, help me with this, I would love to do it, yeah. Yes. Um yeah, we should talk about it. <laughs> For sure. Thank you. Last question? Yeah? yeah? Okay, okay. I just, I'll tell, keep going. Last question. Think, oh. well, I'll come back to you. <laughs> Hi. Hey, how are you? Uh, this question is kind of basic, uh, <laughs> just in terms of conceptualization, mm -hmm. right? Being capable of so much, right? In terms of visual output, how do you decide what concept on an audio level is going to be paired up with a particular visual output, right? Like 2D versus 3D, sculpture versus painting or screen printing? Um, I think that's a little bit more like um, improvisation in a way. I just you know, if I like that, um, if, I, if I'm looking at something, and sometimes it's something you stumble with, you know? With the process, you stumble with these little kind of, um, not mistakes, but these little gestures that life gives you while you're creating, and then you're like, oh, that would be awesome for 2D, or this would be 3D. But sound sometimes is related to the structure, Sometimes sound is not even related. I'm just trying to visualize something that looks cool. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit of mixture, but I like to keep going and see um, what those little things that br life bring you while you're doing your process. There's one more question I know. Sorry. <laughs> right there. On this. It just had his hand up for a while. I uh, love the stuff, man. Um, Thank you. Appreciate the question it. for you was, was um, the virtual spaces, like augmented virtual reality, um, getting some of your work with the whole structure of sound in just a an immersive reality environment, allow people to experience the sound and the structure at the same time. Have you, uh, have you done this? I actually did at the Harold Washington Library. They have um, AI to you know, you can 3D print there for free, and they give you the material. And I was able to look at some of the sculptures and just manipulate them. Um, but, uh, you know, at the same time, I like to create materials. I'm, I'm still AI seems very individual to me. And it's not, you know, it's, you're, you see people with their uh, goggles or whatever, and then just, it's just too, um, you know, uh, it's not, for other people to enjoy. So, um, but I'm, I really want to keep that search. And obviously it's just gonna come to me because you know, technology drives the art, so yeah. And now on a totally unrelated note, the, uh, the sound in the brain thing you were talking about, the, uh, 
the great full dance drummer Mickey Hart, super into this. Um, he works. Oh yeah. He works with neuroscientists in San Francisco, and they they record his brain while he drums, and it's pretty magical stuff. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, I have a, a book of him, um, and I think it's called the the rhythm of life or some, something like that. But it's it's where rhythm started, um, and I, I think he said that the first drumming was the chest drum. So um, yeah. So thank you for for the reference. I appreciate it. Thank you guys.